Hello folks, I think this is an interesting idea so I'm going to share it. I've always felt that belief's only value really is as a bridge to knowledge. Beliefs are worthless on their own and only knowledge is actually useful. So you know if belief gets you to knowledge then it's okay otherwise you know, what's the point? There's no place for beliefs or ideology in science, those things are the opposite of science. And we can personally know everything through the real science as described in Veritopia. So why do people have so many beliefs and why do they cling to them so hard? Are beliefs actually the same thing as demons? So the thesis of this uh, video is that beliefs are autonomous, parasitic, non-material life forms. They have volition, self-awareness, they're sentient and intelligent and are driven by self-preservation instincts like everyone else. They feed, reproduce and adapt. So what are beliefs and do they do you any good? I ask this because I have observed that the one thing that makes people unable to accept new information is their pre-existing beliefs. And these beliefs trigger very strong emotional responses in those who hold them. I observe this in other people and myself. Um, beliefs aren't just thoughts, they're thought emotion combination kind of thing. So do beliefs make you stupid? Well, they certainly make you less open-minded. As Mark Twain said, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so. So, belief is defined as uh, to accept something as true, even though you don't have any evidence for it, essentially. And a group of beliefs are an ideology, a collection of beliefs, a body of doctrine. So ideologies like materialism, capitalism, communism, scientism, whatever, they rule the world. You know, millions of people believe in these ide ideologies and they enact them. So what are they? Well, a little while ago, Richard Dawkins came up with his meme concept, um, which are essentially just uh, cultural analogues to genes in that they self-replicate, they mutate and they respond to selective pressures. They act very much like living things. Uh, they almost have a life of their own. They can replicate, they can be transmitted between people, they live in the minds of many, many people, unchanged perhaps for generations. So they have, you know, a, a solid form, um, as any species does. They can evolve and change to fit different environments, but I don't think he would attribute volition to them, necessarily. The meme is essentially the old idea of the egregore in a biological context, but the egregore is autonomous. Um, it's described as a symbiotic relationship, whereas I'm kind of pushing towards the parasitic relationship. Because, you know, well, I'll explain. Are beliefs necessary? Well, certainly for children, because they haven't had time and the chance to experience life for themselves. So they have to believe their parents and what they tell them for survival purposes. Um, but I'd argue that holding on to beliefs into adulthood could be unnatural for humans. We're supposed to activate our reasoning and know things. Um, beliefs should fall away like baby teeth and be replaced with knowledge like adult teeth. Uh, and knowledge allows you to break the world into manageable chunks like teeth. Belief is yin and knowledge is yang, so belief is the mind of the child and knowledge is the mind of the parent. And I would argue that holding on to beliefs is really the biggest problem of the world at the moment. We know uh, that parasites often control the minds of their hosts. Uh, there's a few examples here, the horsehair worm which causes grasshoppers to drown themselves, and so on. Oh, uh, many humans have toxoplasmosis, this is a good example. It's a brain parasite which is known to cause risky behaviour and motorbike accidents and um, the brains of people who have been in such accidents uh, show toxoplasmosis at a much higher level than the average population. Ideas have a profound control over the behaviour of the people who host them. For the sake of an ideology, there's nothing that people won't do to further that ideology. One could argue that people are essentially puppets to ideologies, and ideologies drive the whole world. Memes reproduce. And people who have ideologies like nothing better than to talk about them and to try to get other people to take on their ideas. They like to convert people. Sometimes they'll force people to adopt them. For example, in the Inquisition or modern day hate speech laws. Are they being driven by those ideologies to do this? By the will of the ideology itself? Does the belief somehow control the human's brain reward centres to give a dopamine rush when expressing it? It does seem to be the case. We do 
get a bit of a rush when we express our ideologies, don't we? Are we being driven like a bike by the ideology itself? Well, it does kind of look like there's a case to be made for that. Beliefs aren't just intellectual ideas, they hook strongly into our emotions. One belief can be linked to many different emotions, which can be triggered by the ideology in different situations. For example, the belief that you're a good person is linked to pride. It makes you feel good to think this, but it's also linked to jealousy or self-hatred if you see somebody who you perceive is better than you, or anger and shame if somebody says you did something bad. The ideology of goodness includes beliefs like, I'm clever, it's not my fault, I don't need to change, everyone else does, and if only everyone was like me, the world would be paradise. This is very common, and we could call it the Lucifer delusion. Uh, socialism and communism, they're kind of the same thing <laughs> in many ways, but they are a particular form of this ideology, uh, where you know the poor people are being oppressed by the rich, this is the narrative, and so we should take from the rich and give it to the poor. So care for the poor and the oppressed is obviously compassionate. And socialists care for the poor, so being a socialist makes me compassionate. It's virtue signaling, and it appears to pride and self-satisfaction, that sense of self-worth. It's I'm clever because I've seen the light, and I'm therefore also a good and compassionate person. If everyone was like me, the world would be paradise. Ideologies are often supremacist. So we accept ideologies into ourselves and they become a part of us. They, uh, they define how we view the world and how we behave. For a person to break out of an ideology may be very difficult, like quitting heroin. They have to realise that their pride in themselves for seeing the light was misplaced and give up the dopamine hit it provides. This is psychologically equivalent to bereavement or betrayal when you lose an ideology and you realise that you were wrong. It's like the loss of a mentor or a, or a good friend. If the ideology goes, it leaves a big gap and it may well cause depression for a while, the same as bereavement. Intellectually, we have to see through the facade of the ideology to its intrinsic self-contradictions and then we have to be able to imagine a better system to break out of it. But what really stands in the way is our emotions, it's not the thoughts. Emotions are the water level of the four elements, that, which is action and power. Emotions carry a lot of weight and they slosh around, just like water. Thoughts are air, which is light and easy to direct and change. Thoughts are much easier to change than emotions, which is why we have to tame our emotions in order to change our minds, and we can't change our emotions just by thinking. Ideologies are like demons. They're spirits, they're not made of matter, they have a kind of a life of their own, maybe a semi-life you might argue. It's only in the minds of people, and it's kind of parasitic because of that. They have no power of their own, they have to be enabled by people, have to be invited in like vampires. And they can spread from person to person by speech or writing. So that's kind of, you know, like a parasite. Um, they completely control people's behaviour, often harming them and other people around them. They divide people, they cause conflicts and wars. You know, for example, the American families who are currently divided over Trump. Um, and they are fed by and become stronger with people's attention. So they grow, they grow too, you know, they're just like living things. And they're strongly connected to your emotions and they trigger them to prevent you from taking on any contradictory ideas which might compete with them for resources, i.e. your attention. So this is a thing that sounds like it could very much be described as a psychic parasite. And it's a close description of demonic possession, don't you think? So are ideologies actually competing demons? Is our planet being run by warring tapeworms? So, perhaps this is what's really going on. Ideologies are like demonic gods controlling millions of people, dividing them, and making them fight and kill each other, all presumably for the sake of psychic real estate, minds the demons can occupy. So, you know, when you've got two religions warring, the uh, ideology demons of each one are trying to just get the minds of the uh, opposing team. You have to invite them in. And then they send their tentacles deep into your brain and body, a bit like kind of psychic verrucas, I guess, with roots. Controlling your emotions, making you their puppet, and using you to spread them around as if you had fleas. All while feeding from your attention, 
blinding you to your real environment and preventing you from ever learning anything that might threaten their home and food source. Then the world is starting to look very much like a stage with countless players acting at the commands of a smaller number of controlling minds, demons or ideologies. People are acting like the wind-up toys of living autonomous spirit beings which span a billion minds. And if this is true, then beliefs are psychic parasites that deliberately control you for their own benefit. They are parasites like the liver fluke, which leads slugs and snails to an early death so it can get on in life. If you're not prepared to review and reject all of your beliefs, then you will inevitably be providing a physical body to be abused by them, and if they're demons, they're not here to be nice to you, they're here to teach you a lesson. Uh, and the only way to win this game is to refuse to play. Beliefs aren't necessary, you can get rid of all of them, and that's probably the one and only path to enlightenment. Spiritual hygiene, this is what it is, this is the thing that's missing in this stinky world. Ridding yourself of all of your dirty, stupid, egocentric beliefs is essential if you don't want to stink as a person, or be like a psychic flea bag, sp spreading misery wherever you go. And it is my experience that ideologies make people fools. They make them close-minded, they make them arrogant. Um, these things have to go, really. They're not doing you any good. And if they truly are kind of like some kind of psychic parasite, a bit like a tapeworm, then they're not very nice, not really the sort of thing that you want. Just like having fleas or, you know, hair lice, that kind of thing. So really that, that is what they are, they're the psychic equivalent of lice. And this is why the world's kind of so horrible, it's because people are just um, not taking care of their spiritual hygiene. So they wash their bodies, but on the inside they're full of all manner of filth, just like Jesus said. And that filth is the things that they think. It's their beliefs. It's the it's people's beliefs that make them horrible. It's like Jesus said, it's not uh, what goes into you that makes you horrible, it's what comes out. And what comes out is dr driven by your ideology. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting and so on. Uh, I hope the uh, production values and all of that, which are terrible, don't put you off too much. Um, Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.